Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. Today we're going to take a look at installing the firmware on the Zygu 6100. I've done lots and lots of videos on X6100 firmware, but one that I really haven't done is a step-by-step -step process of just how to do the firmware itself. Usually I do a firmware review. This time there's no new firmware out. I just want to make sure that this video is out there to show you the easiest way of getting your firmware on your 6100. Let's get to it. There will be links to everything that you need to get this job done in the description down below. I like to go to Radioddity's website. First off, Radioddity has been a fantastic supporter of this channel. And second, it's best to have a partner in the US that gets you in between the manufacturer and yourself, because you trying to deal with Zygu is going to be next to impossible. You want to deal with Radioddity, Radioddity has a fantastic pipeline to get support from Zygu, and they will take care of you. I have had nothing but fantastic reports from Radioddity. So on Radioddity's website, I want to click on the support link at the top, and then I want to click on the Zygu radio. Down here you'll find firmware and manuals and all kinds of information for all of the Zygu products, and one of those is the X6100, which is today's video. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to pick the latest version of the firmware. It will be at the top of the list. So that makes it fairly easy to pick. When I click on that link, it's going to ask me to download it. I'm going to pick a folder to put it in and I'm going to remember that folder that I put it in. We're going to use a tool called Etcher. Let's go get Etcher. Again, links for this will be in the description down below. We're going to hit download Etcher. This works on every operating system. So this procedure will work no matter which OS you have as your base OS. I'm going to hit download and I'm going to pick Etcher for Windows, and I'm going to use the Etcher for Windows installer. And I'm going to save this in my downloads folder. This one's going to be a little bit easier. Once the download is finished, I'm just going to click on that and I'm going to click on the download itself and it says open file. If I click on this folder, it's going to show me the folder that the download is in, but I don't even need to see that. I just need to open the file. And that's an option. Okay, now it is asking me if I want to install it. And I do, I agree. I, I chose the download. I want to install the thing. And there it is. It puts an icon on the desktop, which is just fine. It also puts it down in your start menu, so nothing to worry about there. And we are done, so let's run the thing. Hey, look at that, it actually ran itself. Remember earlier when I said you need to remember where you downloaded the firmware to? This is why you need to remember that. So I'm going to pick flash from file and we're going to go to that folder. Etcher is smart enough to look inside of zip files and find firmware images. So I'm going to go ahead and just double click on this zip file and it picks out the SD card image right from inside. We are good to go on that. Next up, I'm going to need an SD card. It tells me that it's 857 megabytes on screen. So you're going to need at least a one gigabyte SD card, but Good luck finding a tiny SD card like that. Probably even the smallest one you have is a two gig card from 20 years ago that'll work just fine. I have a 32 gig card, this will be plenty. I'm gonna put my 32 gig card inside of my bigger card adapter because that's what my laptop uses. And I'm gonna shove it into my laptop's SD card hole. And it is now in, and Windows has seen it, and Etcher has automatically picked it. If it doesn't automatically pick it or it picks the one that you don't like, hit change, and you'll see it's the only choice available. You might have more than one choice available here, but it's usually going to be 100% external media. Etcher prevents you from overwriting the hard disk that you booted off of inside of your computer. In this case, it's the only one that I have. It is an SDHC card. It is 31.9, it's 32 gigabytes. This looks extremely logical to me. This is the one I'm gonna pick. So select it. And then I'm gonna hit flash. What you couldn't see is that Windows asked me for permission to write to this disk. If you're on Mac OS, it's gonna pop up and ask you for your password. If you're on Linux, it's gonna ask you for your sudo password, which is your current user password, same situation. And it's just gonna get right to it. And after it's done writing, it's gonna start validating. It's gonna verify that the image that it wrote matches the image that it wrote from. Finished, it ejected, you're ready to roll. All you need to do is pull the SD card out of the machine. And we are done at the computer. Let's get over to the radio and do the next few steps. Here we are at the radio. One of the most important things to do when you're doing a firmware upgrade on a radio is to plug it into shore power. There are two steps to this firmware process. The SD card goes in upside down because that's how they mounted the SD card reader. I'm going to go ahead and push the power button to turn it on with the SD card installed. Now it's doing a bunch of work on the internal storage. 
by copying the image from the external SD card to the internal EMMC. Power off in three, two, one, zero, and it should shut itself down. When it turns off, it is very important that you take the SD card back out. Otherwise, it will just continue to overwrite the internal storage every time you turn it on. Now, for the next step, we need to turn it back on, and we need to go into System Setting, Firmware Upgrade, and then it's going to have a file, it's going to have the only file there all ready to go. All you need to do is push the Upgrade button. And at the top, it says that it is done and you have a 100% progress indicator. All right, folks, that was a pretty straightforward process. Download the file, burn it to SD card, insert the SD card in the radio, boot it up. When it's done, it'll turn itself off, take the SD card out, go into the radio after you turn it back on again, and do the firmware upgrade inside. That is because there are actually two different devices inside of this. You have a Linux-based computer and you have an STM32-based SDR controller inside of the radio, and you need to upgrade both of them. If you don't upgrade both of them, weird stuff will happen. It'll probably work okay, but you're certainly not getting the benefit of doing the firmware upgrade. There are links in the description down below where you can get the firmware from Radiodity, where you can get Belina Etcher to burn the SD card in that super easy way. Also, if you'd like to get any other products from Radiodity, I've got a discount code for you down in the description. There is a video right up here I think you will enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. I'll see you over there.